You're listening to Razor Riffs with Keith Razor and Alan Lee, right here on LA Talk Radio. All right. Okay. Welcome to Razor Riffs with our guest tonight, uh, the great Carl Serfalio. Did I say it right? Yeah, you did. Good job. Oh, excellent. So... <laughs> It's always, it's always we, like I called you 10 minutes before the show to make sure I said it right. And then I was like, oh, everybody, God. Does. everybody does or everybody should. <laughs> <laughs> so, Carl, thank you so much for doing the show. This is Alan Lee, the trusty sidekick. Yeah, trusty. Hello, hello, Mr. Trusty. trusty. Like, like, like rusty. Uh, what's that? Rent in tin. With I'm, a I'm twisted T. <laughs> <laughs> Glad to meet you, sir. Let me turn you guys up so we can laugh together. Uh, oh, you know oh, what? Thank you, so you much. Thanks so much for reaching out and uh, and inviting me. I, I love this kind of stuff. Oh, uh, thank, well, thank you so you. much for for saying for saying yes. My friend Jonathan uh, said that he worked with you at a at Knott's Berry Farm. He said you did the stunts for his work to like train him and stuff. And I was like, oh, yeah. I know, I know, Carl. He was in the Fantastic Four. Yeah, that's a small world right there. I tell you, Jonathan is a really wonderful human being, and and I was so happy to be able to uh, to uh, help train him a little bit. You know, he comes from a, a wrestling background, yeah, and oh. and all that training really came in handy. Uh, they had hired me to uh, put a show together at Knott's Berry Farm and uh, train the stunt people, and uh, uh, he and I became fast friends and. I hired him on a movie here about a year or so ago, yeah. and uh, we've been staying in touch. So, Jonathan's a good man to have in your corner. Awesome. Well, uh, I'm so glad to, for you to do it. Now, uh, I, I wanted to ask you some questions, and I might go back and forth a little, but I wanted to ask you, what is the difference between a stunt coordinator and a, and a stunt supervisor? Because I'm sure a lot of people... Oh, interesting. have different opinions about what it is. Well, stunt supervisor is not in any lingo that I've ever, ever known here in the States. Okay. That might be something that you find uh, in, in uh, European or British films. Hmm. Um, uh, there's a, a different qualifications. Here, a stunt coordinator okay. is hired on a production to oversee the action, mm -hmm. uh, train the actors, and hire the stunt people, and uh, make sure that everything goes as smoothly as possible for camera. I believe a stunt supervisor might be on the other side of the pond. And, and your, your, your background, you have a little both in it, you know? So that's why I was curious. Yeah, uh, I've, I've uh, I, I, don't, I don't know if I've been billed as a stunt supervisor though. Well Coordinating. Uh, oh, is that right? Well, uh, it's not surprising. Um, <laughs> uh, that may have been that you know that may have been on a couple of shows that I was a, a producer on, and they asked me to double duty for it. Um, but uh, you know, as far as an official title, uh, stunt coordinator is what the union recognizes. Yeah. Now uh, you've been doing stunts for basically your entire career. You know, you've been in literally every single movie doing the stunts. And I just wanted to, like, how does one, because I know how, like, when one wants to do acting, they do auditions and all that stuff. But, how, like, can you audition for stunts? Like, how does one get into that? That's a really good question. Um, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I don't think there's not really auditions for stunts, though they're are instances where people will ask you to audition. Mm -hmm. um, and that's mostly, I believe, work on wire, um, things that, uh, like you can't audition a car crash. Right. You, know, you can't audition a, a car hit. What, what you do do as a stunt person is learn your craft. You knock on doors and hopefully make friends and hopefully get some training from professionals that will spend their time and knowledge with you. Uh, and, and I was very fortunate in my youth to come across some wonderful people who 
helped make my career and who shared their their wisdom, their knowledge, their know-how, their ability to um, get me going. And, and that's how you become a stunt person. Uh, so, for instance, when I was at Knott's Berry Farm and, and helping the new stunt people train for the show, I taught some I taught them some things mm. and, and, and what they have done is gone out and found other stunt people to teach them other things. And as you move along in your career, you learn cars and motorcycles and fire and high falls and wire work and fights, camera angles. Um, you, you learn how to pay attention on the set. Um, there's, um, there's a lot that goes into it. Now you you probably know everybody like and like I said like you know when it comes to like for example acting or stand up comedy where I know the actors and the comedians you probably know the actors and the stunt people so you know everyone behind the scenes as well. Yeah, and I think that's important. I, I think that um, when you go onto a set, whether you're a, a stunt person or an actor. Um, it, it's it benefits you to know who's doing what, why they're doing it, and if they're doing it correctly. It's not everybody. Not everybody does their job to the utmost perfection, and and if there's something wrong, it could affect your livelihood, your yeah. health, your your it put you in danger. So you want to know as much as you can, and um, and I've always I've tried to always take that as a given when I go on set. Have you ever like done a stunt since you were talking about like some stunts are like, you know, life or death. Have you ever been in a stunt that like you were really fearful? Like it was really, really dangerous. Fuck. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah you Against know. all odds. Thank Against all that. odds. Yeah. You're, you're right. That was, um, that's one that sticks out in, in my brain because it's it's the only time I wrote home and said, in case I don't make it, you know, um, <laughs> don't tell the dog. Uh, wow. It, it's uh, it, it was a, a scary situation, you know, that, that it was something that had not been done before. And in today's world, it would not be done because you would be on a wire. Right. A decelerator, a descender, and they drop you down almost to the water. And then they bring you back up for take two. Yeah, I pretty much had one take to do wow. this, and and if I moved like like a live person would, um, then I owed them another one, and I didn't want to do it twice. Right. So yeah, I guess all odds, no. sixty five feet flat into water, blind is is a no. is a tough thing to do, and and um, but you know what, we were hired to do tough things. And yeah. when you say yes to a job, you better know that in your heart, you're indestructible. And, uh, you know, I was young and indestructible at that point. Um, kind of knocked the shit out of me. But, but it was, um, it was uh, something very special in my career. And I made, you know, wonderful contact with it. And, um, you know, I, I, it's, it's good advice for younger people today to just say no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, do, do you think like in today's like movies where, or TV shows where stunts are becoming uh, more and more popular, but then also uh, CGI is like kind of taking over on search and stunts. Do you think like that's a direction that, you know, future stunt people would want to like learn? Are you talking about CGI? Yeah, because like you can't do certain stunts, but you could have a CGI do it, but you still get credit for the stunt. You know what I mean? Well, I think <clears throat> my point of view at this point in, in history, I think that um, stunt people can do everything up to a certain point. And there's things where CGI can and would take over, but all it does is save you. You know, it, it it saves your ass because you only have so many of those in your career. Right. And so 
And so you, you, you learn what you can do and you learn where CGI is going to take over. And, and you have to let production do what they do. And that is, okay, you stop here and we'll do the rest of CGI. I mean, there's, there's car jumps and, 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 and crashes and, um, you know, all this new Marvel, let's say new, but all the, the superhero uh, movies that are out. Um, you got stunt people up to a point, and then, of course, it's got to be CGI because humans can't do those things. Right. You no, know, uh, talking about, oh, uh, I'm a big fan, uh, Carl, of the 1940s Republic serials. And uh, there was a stuntman that you may know of. That they even have a trophy with his name on it, David Sharp. Sure, David Sharp. And I used to be amazed at him. And he was in this one uh, uh, serial called uh, Daredevils of the Red Circle. Yeah. And uh, unbelievable <laughs> because, uh, you know, the falls they took without CGI, just like you guys, you know, uh, and, uh, you know, they had the wood, the balsa wood that would break easier on the chair. You know, the, 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 what's that glass sure. made of sugar? Sugar, you know, what you hit him over the head. And uh, but he, he was physically the things he did. And this is something that amazes me about you guys is that you're like these uh, 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 these circus acrobats and uh, and actually like the wrestlers and so forth. But the, the jumps and the 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 in the air stuff. Uh, was always the most amazing thing uh, that you guys did going way back. I, like to me, that was a tradition. Uh, even in Westerns, you know, uh, on the horse and uh, I think what was his name? I should know this was an Asian name. He was on the, on the, uh, on the stagecoach. Uh, oh, for heaven's sake. Sorry. I'm talking about that. Yakima. Yeah. Yakima. Yeah. Canute. Canute. Just more like a, an Eskimo name. Uh, yeah. Yakima. <laughs> See, that's one of those uh, things where Carl knows everybody, so you could take time, and Carl will be like, "I got it." Yeah, he knows. You know, but I, I was never. Um, I was, <laughs> that's going I, way back, Carl. That, I, that is, but but you know, the, <laughs> the talk that I hear, that I heard when I was a young man, is that Davy Sharp was probably one of the best stunt people that ever came through the industry. Um, is and, that right? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And and uh, and Yak. You know, he was, he's like the godfather. Um, and he did things that other people want to try to do, but have never really duplicated. You know, you'll, you'll see, uh, 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 oh, Harrison Ford in uh, the blah, blah, the Lost Ark. Um, Raiders, Raiders of the Lost Ark. Raiders of the Lost Ark. The, the, the stunt that um, Terry Leonard Dublin, uh, Harrison Ford, goes underneath the truck. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. that's that's a big homage to um, Yakima Kanat. That's who, right, the stagecoach. That's right, who Terry wow. kind of came up with. So there's um, and not all of us can do everything, but a, oh, yeah. a, a lot of us can do many things. Sure. Um, and uh, you know, Davy Sharp had air sense. You know, he knew what to do in the air. That comes from being a gymnast or a, that's right. or a high diver. That's you know, right. so you look at. You look at people's backgrounds before you put them in a spot or ask them if they want to sure. be in a spot. Sure. Wow. Now, now, Carl, I wanted to ask because uh, you're uh, not only are you a stunt person, but you're also an actor. You know, you, you were in Casino and Fantastic Four and Con Air. So you've done all these big movies. I mean, I don't know if Fantastic Four was big, but now that yeah, you know, now it's getting big. You know what I mean? It's like Fantastic Four is probably bigger now than it ever would have been if it came out in the theater. Yeah, it's got a bigger following now than it ever would have had. None of us see a dime from it either. Wow. Really? Wow. You know, uh, it, it's because it didn't come out. It's because it, it didn't go through all those proper channels. But but it's funny too is that all of us are still friends uh, okay. from that. Little product, <laughs> That's know? pretty and cool. Yeah. Yeah. All of us still stay in touch. Um, you know, we, we did shows together for some years, some uh, autograph shows and uh, uh, there's a, actually there's a new book out that uh, Alex Hyde White just uh, put out uh, about the Fantastic Four. Yeah. So you might oh. want to take a look at that. That's on Amazon, I believe. 
Now I wanted to ask you because uh, I I think like you probably didn't enjoy being in that that suit, even though you might have liked the character. I don't think you know what I mean. Like I got I got a sense maybe it was hot or something. It's the hottest fucking thing I've ever been in. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was two or three inches of rubber um, without any breathing air. Wow. Uh, yeah. And and it's um, you know it was it was wonderful. I mean, and a couple of stories about that is that uh, Optic Eye, who made the suit, were were dead on to the character. Yeah, you know, it it was exact to the character. Um, it it does look good. And, yeah, yeah, it does. It's probably the best suit out of all the movies. Um, I, I tell you though that that there was no uh, there's no breathing tube. There was no. Uh, Wow. There's no budget for a cool suit, uh, which means that, oh, um, well, like when I worked on The Flash, which the first time around on, on TV, the guy in the outfit had a little air cool suit underneath his suit, and it kept his body temperature down. Oh, wow. For me, because it's a Roger Corman production, there was no money. Um, <laughs> uh, there, was, there was just nothing to do but, but suffer it out. And, uh, and the only way I could get any kind of cool was to open the mouth and have a little fan s stuck in the mouth. Wow. Get a little air in there. Um, and, uh, and I had two heads. One was a all rubber head. That's what I used to go through the wall and did the fights. And then the other was the anatomical head that the mouth moved, the eyes, brows moved, the nose, the, the cheeks. And they would operate that from off on the side on a little remote control. So as I was standing there mouthing, the, saying the words, the mouth would move. But all I heard was wow. inside the helmet. Did um, you ever think of yourself while you were filming it? Like you're filming the movie. Do you ever think to yourself, God, does this fucker ever turn back to a human being? <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, for me, the longer they needed me in the suit, <laughs> you know, the better it was for me. Uh, um, okay. And then Michael Bailey Smith, who played uh, uh, the human the version, human, the human version of it. Yeah. Um, you know, he and I are close friends. We've done two or three movies together since then. Nice. And, uh, and he's a hell of a guy. Uh, so, so yeah, here's the other thing about being in the suit is that when I was in the suit, everybody wanted a picture with me. Right. And I got to tell you, the, 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 the women on the set, from secretaries to visitors, cozied on up, put their arms around me, put their hands on me. At the end of the day, I take the suit off, put my clothes, and I walk out, and they won't, won't even nod to me. You know, <laughs> <laughs> uh, trying to be nice to me. You know, the this, this suit had a lot of power going for it. it it's kind of like uh, those guys who work at Disneyland, where like. Uh, your kid will be like, oh, my God, I want a picture with Mickey. And then you're thinking, oh, Mickey's only a high school kid who, you know, who's working a summer job. There you go, man. There you go. Uh, yeah. Um, but, you know, like uh, Michael Bailey Smith playing Ben Grimm, he did all the voiceover mm -hmm. for for the thing. Um, all I had to do is make sure make sure that I got the words out so they could match them up. Uh, and. Uh, yeah, we're all we're all still fairly close. Yeah. And then I want I wanted to ask you about Casino, which y your role was very small, but mm -hmm. it, but it was a big important role for the film because one, you kill a bunch of people, and then the next second, Joe Pesci kills you. Yeah, you know what? <laughs> I would have written myself a, a longer piece. Yeah, you know, yeah, if I was the writer. Um, but uh, but it was a, an important piece in the in the picture because it it showed Pesci Pesci his his psychological turn you know it was it was how ruthless he could be oh. and um, and uh, and I had a great time with it it was uh, uh, I knew it was going to be fun I knew it was going to be bloody um, and uh, and uh, it was. Uh, you know, it, it was for shooting up. The place was fun because I got to kill lots of friends. Right. I'm usually on the end of that, and then, uh, <laughs> oh. and then, and then it was time for me to 
to get my head put in the vice. And so the first, the first take, these guys pull me around the corner and I'm kind of limping in with them. And all I hear is Scorsese yelling, cut, 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 cut. Mm -hmm. I looked up, he goes, he goes, what are you doing walking? I said, well, I thought I'd help these guys with me. He goes, fuck that. He said, these guys have been beating you up for three days and stabbing shit in your balls. So you <laughs> let them drag you in. I go, oh, yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. So, um, so uh, uh, it was, you know, a little, little direction from Mr. Scorsese. And then, uh, and then being on the table, I was on the table for about seven hours or so. Yeah. It was a, it was a long, long day. You know, it was three or four hours in makeup, about seven hours on the table. And, um, you know, Joe spitting out his dialogue on me all over the place. Oh, I lost you. No, no, we're here. Oh, here, we, here we go. Um, and uh, uh, it, it was, um, I knew it was important, you know, and it was an important piece. And yeah. they, um, they had made a, a rubber head for me just in case I couldn't deal with what was going on or just in case it wasn't working when he, when he closed the vice on my head. Yeah. But uh, again, the makeup guys were unbelievable. They put a prosthetic over my left eye with an eye with a fake eyeball in it and two tubes that ran to it, one tube of air and one tube of blood. And as he tightened the vice on my head, the eyeball would pop out and then the blood would squirt. And uh, that's the part that they had to cut out. Wow. Uh, from uh, because they got it. They got an X rating because of the violence of that. So uh, just because of that off. scene. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my yeah. God. Yeah, they had to back off on on that. So in the movie, you see my eyeball just start to come out and then they cut away. Uh, uh, and, then, and then Frank reaches over and slits my neck. But um, but uh, but we had a great time. You know, I, I worked with just such professional people, Scorsese, Pesci, um, uh, Frank, who, who brought me in. It was it was, um, it was quite a great experience, you know, uh, uh, and. and uh, Pesci and, and Scorsese, they've been friends forever, so they had quite a lot of fuck you dialogue going back and forth. You know, it was extremely funny. Extremely yeah. funny. And then, uh, Alan, you, you there? Yeah, sure. I'm I'm listening to, uh, I'm, I have a question that I'm thinking oh, about. That, you raised um, your hand, so I was like, oh, you should ask. No, no, I, 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 the, the visor is, it was, anyway, um, uh, swordplay, uh, and and guns. Lost your audio, brother. Uh, Carl. Here we go. That, start, start again. Oh, perfect timing. Uh, uh, swordplay and guns. Uh, I'm always amazed at uh, how those are um, choreographed. And I wasn't going to bring this in, but why not? <clears throat> Uh, you know, thoughts. I'm a big gun guy. I, you know, I know, I, you know, I play. You know, it's it's a hobby, and uh, I just couldn't believe, uh, and I have to say, stupidity of Alec Baldwin, and it's a single action Colt, and he says, I, 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 I didn't pull anything, and you can't. You <laughs> but on the safety level, what what do you think about? I mean, if you don't want, I mean, it's you know. What do you think about that situation? If you had to sum it up in a couple of sentences, I didn't, you know, I just thought it was interesting you uh, being in the yeah, business. Cause that, this is a tough spot that? for me to be in. I mean, I've got, I've got an opinion and, and, um, you know, the, 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 the gun wasn't put through the right. Yeah. Channel absolutely. Before, before we're putting his hand. When I, when I'm handed a gun, whether I used it the day before or not, I always ask the, the armor to yes. go through it with me. The armor. And the, the armor or whoever hands it to me, which is using an assistant armor or the AD. But I always go through that gun. Um, but as an actor, as a stunt person, yeah. somebody hands you a gun and says, it's a cold, cold gun. It's a cold gun. Right. Um, you know, there never should have been any live ammunition anywhere on the that set. That was anywhere. strange. 
Um, and that was and, weird. And the, I believe that whoever hands the gun over needs to check it. Whether you fire that six times, click it six times to make sure you got six blanks in there or not. As an actor, somebody hands you something and the director's talking to you about the direction, the directing that, that they want. Cinematographer's talking to you about the angle of the, of the camera and the AD's handing you a gun. You're trying to remember your dialogue, your action. You've got a lot going on, so you depend on the people around you. And if they fuck up, yeah, it comes down to you. Now, I, I don't believe that whether Alec pulled the trigger or not, it might even be an unconscious thing that you do because you have a gun in your hand. But <clears throat> I don't believe that he is guilty of anything. Yeah. I, he was a victim of, of like you said, careless uh, safety protocol protocol that was not followed. The armor, the armor is going to should should be, uh, and I think they they're attending to that. Uh, you know, like you said, I agree. Yeah, it's 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 a shame. I mean, uh, you know, honestly, God, it's a shame. And I've been on I've been on a couple of sets where people got hurt, sure. and it's um, it's devastating because any one of us can be in that spot, any yeah. one of us at any time. Um, that's why going back to the beginning of this, that's why you try to make sure who's doing what and how. Um, you know, accidents do happen uh, when production is on a tight budget they cut corners that's right and you got to make sure that the corners they cut don't infringe on the safety of anyone on the set behind camera or in front of camera because i've never heard uh of an accident in the news of somebody being run through on zaro with a sword or robin hood with an arrow I find that interesting, and all these maybe, maybe, but I mean, never. It was oh my god, you know what happened on the on the set of Zorro, or the Three Musketeers? Two of them got got you know uh, skewered. Yeah, I find that you know, interesting. It, it's um, swordplay is like a fine dance. You know, you 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 talk it, you walk it, and you catch it up to speed, um, and. And you also, I've done a couple of, couple of things with swords, but they were minor. When you're talking swordplay, you want people in there who are expert swordsmen or swordswomen. Sure. Um, sure. To do that. So maybe the reason you don't hear about those things is because Errol Flynn was doubled, you know? Um, uh, yeah. You know, Basil Rathbone was doubled. Yeah. There you go. You know, for as good as they might have been, there's situations where you don't let your actors do those things. Because, you know, Basil Rath Rathbone, a bit of trivia, he was a hell of a offenser. Yes, he Basil. was. Yes, he was. But then again, whether they're, a, they're great at what they do or not, you take them up to a point and you sure. say, okay, that's enough. It's safety time. Because if, cause if you do get skewered, we're done. Yes. Right? And that's, that's, <laughs> up to the, that's up to the producer. That's right. Um, and and uh, and as far as arrows go, those are usually on a line, and and are and are kind of catapulted in mm. to a safety device on, oh, yeah. on your chest okay. or whatever it is. So um, so you know, thank God that accidents are few and far in between. Yeah. Uh, and and that we don't hear a lot about them. But um, you know, this one this one on Rust was was devastating for a lot of people a horrible horrible sad tragic no and, carl uh, i wanted to ask about the book you wrote uh stars uh stunts and stories uh when did you start writing this book because i i was i was reading it and it i think it's just fascinating and has a lot of good wisdom and stuff but like what gave you that the idea to to write a book like that um i was <clears throat> <laughs> it was back around oh 2001 I think I was home recouping from a something that happened to me you know and um, a couple of my stunt friends would come over and you know I was I was down for about six weeks or so and uh, 
and my friends would come over and we would talk stunt stories. We talk stories about the set, stories about people, stories, 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 what I've done, what they've done, who we know has done something else. And my wife, who is a writer, said to me one day, she goes, you know, you should be writing this stuff down. She goes, this is all pieces of history and knowledge That's that right. get lost along the way. That's right. And so now, so we're talking, you know, right around 2002, I started writing notes and then writing chapters. And then uh, come along 2014 or 15, I finally finished it. But <laughs> I, I felt by then it was time for it to be knowledge for anybody who wants it. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and I and hopefully I wrote it with with uh, some things that are be helpful, some things that are funny, some photos that are that are fun to look at, and um, and I think it's got a little bit of something for almost everybody, whether you're an actor, a stunt person, or a bricklayer. I think you can relate to. Oh, it's stories. it's it's wonderful because um, they're uh, really stories about challenge. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And about overcoming challenges and and getting your head and your heart yeah. in the right spot. You know, you yeah. mentioned Jean LaBelle is the funniest thing because uh, Keith would not even come close to even knowing. It, many people would not know who Jean LaBelle was, but there was a guy in, in Hawthorne, California that had this um, gym uh, called the Renaissance uh, Spa and uh, Bill Sturgis, and uh, he once said, oh, you know, I bet we can crash uh, the Academy Awards. And I said, what, what are you talking about? He said, I have the pamphlet of how to crash any party, by, and the author of this pamphlet, how to crash any party in Hollywood, is Gene LaBelle. <laughs> yeah. I thought you might find that humorous might even know uh, about that pamphlet. You know, I don't know about the pamphlet, but Uncle Gene and I were pretty close. <laughs> oh, my you know? God. That's, that's wild, man. Oh, that is wild. One of my mentors. Um, yeah. I knew Gene from the beginning. Oh, probably 1979 or so. We did a, did a film together, actually wow. a, a TV movie called Galactic in 1980. Oh, wow. And, <laughs> and, uh, and Gene and I became fast friends. I've got a wrestling background. And, yeah. uh, and yeah. judo, and uh, he would have his uh, his dojo open on Monday oh, nights. That's he right. invited me down, and uh, and since then we were again fast friends. You know, we just lost him just a few months ago. Just recently, and, yes. Yeah, and uh, and it's it's not only a loss to the industry, but it's it's a loss to humankind. He was the, the sweetest man ever who could kill you in two moves. <laughs> <You know? laughs> um, in fact, I think there's a picture or two in my book of he and I together. Oh. And, uh, and yeah, uh, he, uh, again, he, he just, he was a, a superhuman being. I'm one of the fortunate people who can call him a friend. Wow. That's nice. Yeah. Now, Carl, I, I want to respect your time, but I do have two more questions for you. Uh, question number one, did you know Fight Club was going to be as huge as it is? Or like when you did it, did you think uh, it's just another movie? Well, that's, let me think back on that for a second. I, I was, I thought it would be, I thought it would be good because Brad was in it, you know? Right. And by the way, what a great guy. Um, mm -hmm. And, and uh, uh, Ed Norton was, you could, just, you could just feel the confidence coming off of him. And in fact, um, the director would ask him questions about, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? Uh, w when, I was, when I was coming down the stairs to the basement, and that's one scene mm -hmm. uh, where they were fighting in lose, lose Place, um, I came down the stairs 42 times. Wow. Oh, boy, my ass hurt. <laughs> at the end of the day. <laughs> but, uh, but I thought I thought it would be good. Uh, uh, you know, Meatloaf, again, really a great guy. 
and and I watch these guys. I, I love to watch actors because, like you said, I've got some acting credits, and and I always love being on screen. But I would watch these guys do their deal over and over again, and try to take little bits of little nuggets of what they did and, and how they did it, because that's that's class. Yeah. You're in class. If you're around these people, you're in class. You know, if you're around Tom Cruise, you're in class. You're like in an acting class. It's just mm -hmm. for you. Yeah. Um, yeah. And 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 now watching movies is, it, if the movie's good, I don't think about anything else. If the movie isn't so good, I try to grab the pieces that work and don't work, and learn from those. Ah. One of my best friends did a movie with Tom Cruise where he fired him and uh, it was called uh, Jerry Maguire and uh, Jay Moore, who I tour with or, or used to tour with, uh, he, you know, he told me that when he fired Tom Cruise, that was the scariest day of his life because he's, he's not really an actor. He's a comic. And that was his first big movie. And he was like, so we did the take four times. 40 times or whatever. And he's like, I don't think Tom bought it once. <laughs> <laughs> Tom, Tom has that presence. You know, we did, well, I go back to uh, far and away uh, yeah. with Tom and, and Nicole and, uh, and uh, he and I bumped into each other again on, on uh, MI3. And uh, it, he was the, he was the same guy, just richer. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know what? I, I got a big handshake and a hug and a how do you do and and a couple minutes of, of speaking with him he's very personable you know he's a very personable guy and if you look at his career he really knows his shit yeah he really knows oh, he what does. Works. yeah yeah he really knows what works and and actors should know that yeah. you know um He's, he's never going to do the stuff that Brad Pitt does. You know, um, Pitt is is comical and self-deprecating. Tom, even if he does that, it's more of a joke than a reality. You right. Know? <laughs> you know, and, and you, you look at you look at those people that Harrison Ford stays within in his lane, you know, and and it works for him. John Wayne did the same thing. You know, you don't step away from what works for you, mm -hmm. even though you might want the challenge. At the end of the day, it all comes down to you because you're that guy or that woman uh, yeah. doing that thing. Now, Carl, my last question for you, and I feel this is a very silly question because, uh, in my opinion, I think it's one of the funniest romantic comedy movies of all time. Uh, critics probably don't agree with me, but you did the stunts on Serving Sarah, and I wanted to know, like, what was that like? Because I'm assuming you did the stunts where the dog bit the guy, right? Well, let me pull that out of my hand. Uh, let's see here. Um, <laughs> uh, serving Sarah, holy shit. Um <laughs> I, I doubled, uh, I doubled uh, uh, the Vincent. actor. Yeah. 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 Uh, I doubled him. <laughs> and um, I know I did. I know I slid a car around in a chase uh, off the highway onto the gravel. What else? What else did he do? Oh, my God. You know, we're, we're looking at, we're looking at over 300 credits here. And you got to pull that one up. When, Nobody's ever fucking asked me about that movie before or since. <laughs> Can't you ask me about something else, please? <laughs> How about Beetlejuice? Let's talk Beetlejuice. You know, okay, let's well, ask movie. about Beetlejuice then. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know what? I, was there a dog attack on Vincent? Yeah. I did that. <laughs> Now I got to find the movie and call you back. <laughs> You're going to call me back and be like, so Keith, I just watched this movie and uh, I hate oh you because it was terrible. 
oh my god let me see yeah i did a dog attack i've done a couple of those yeah. um uh you know what it's funny i i get a call every once in a while from some friends and they said uh hey i just saw us on blah 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 movie and i go oh really <laughs> they go yeah do you remember i go no you know sometimes sometimes it just all kind of runs together i was so fortunate in my career you know i, I and i'm I'm blessed again, people who who brought me along, people who names you might recognize as Ronnie Rondell and Ron Stein and Frank Orsati and Mick Rogers. Uh, these are people who who took me and and showed me how to do things, yeah. which led to me working. And sometimes I would work two shows a day. I think we lost Alan. Oh, he's back. But there you go. Sometimes I would, I would, uh, he's back. Um, sometimes I would double dip. I'd go to work on the Incredible Hulk in the morning and on Night Rider at night. You know. Yeah. But, and and so one costume changed to another. One car hit led to a punch, uh, and so I have to, I have to give myself a little break here that I, I don't remember everything yeah. that I did. You know. Um, and serving Sarah, holy shit! When's the last time you watched that? Honestly, like three weeks ago. Uh, so I get a residual. <laughs> well, because uh, because uh, my my favorite because I do stand up comedy and my favorite comedy because I also write scripts is my my favorite comedy is romantic comedy because I think that's the most truthful form of comedy. Okay, well, I, that, that's my opinion, but you know. Well, now I got to watch the damn movie. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and take a look at it, you know. Um, yeah. How about, okay, give me another, give me another question. Don't let, let's, let's not end up on this. You don't want to end on, okay. Con Air, did you ever meet John oh, Cusack? That's a great film. Great film. Uh, Cusack, yeah, really a good guy. Um, uh, uh, John Malkovich, another great guy. Uh, oh yeah, uh, I've got uh, I've got pictures of him with my baby daughter. You know, he brought her little toys. Uh, uh, it was it was an amazing set to work on. Not the most proficient from the director, who I think it was his first time directing a film. Um, we would we would spend ten or twelve hours in our trailer waiting for him to light a set. And, and get it right. Um, but, uh, you know, again, that's not my forte. Right. Uh, but wonderful people, you know, Nick was great to work with. Uh, and, and I thought that there's a movie that I thought would be big, you know, yeah. uh, just, just the actors in it. Working with Malkovich was, was amazing. Uh, and, and again, watching, watching a pro like that, you know, do just, it just his dialogue would just roll off of his off of his tongue. You know, yeah. his attitude, his his everything, and 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 when he looks at you, you get scared. You know, for you know, and and, and it was um, <clears throat> again a great experience. You know, and, and I spent boy, I spent nine or ten weeks on it. Yeah. And then see that that's pretty impressive too, especially since the entire movie is about you know a plane being hijacked. Yeah, uh, which part? Which part is? is no, like how Malkovich is, you know, like his acting was so sharp and stuff. Yeah, he um, he was surrounded by some really wonderful people, uh, uh, and and you know everybody everybody kind of fed into him. He was he was the king of yeah. that that group of guys, you know, and he took that role, and I think all of us played on, onto it. And and a weaker actor would not have held that spot like that. Wow. Um, if you watch the movie, he doesn't say a lot, but every time the camera's on him, you're you're waiting. You're like, oh, what's he going to say That's now? Right. That's right. And, and he might he might get two or three little lines out, <clears throat> but he definitely makes his point. Um, and and we all, I think we all recognize that we were around some extraordinary talent well carl where, where where can the folks at home follow and support you 
Well, that's very nice. Uh, you know, you can you can find me on Facebook. Uh, you can go to uh, Amazon.com and look for my book, Stars, Stunts, and Stories, A Hollywood Stuntman's Fall to Fame. See how I got that work during that fall to fame thing? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, uh, I know, was in Serving Sarah. <laughs> and, but I don't remember it. <laughs> uh, I remember Elizabeth Hurley. Uh, and and Matthew uh, Matthew, um, but uh, and I remember sliding a car around because I got kind of close to a camera. But you know what? Um, uh, Facebook, Amazon.com, and uh, you know, go rent some movies. Yeah. You know, go enjoy. Okay. Uh, I uh, I'm extremely fortunate, like I said, and 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 if I can help anybody else move along i'm happy to do that as well well carl thank you so much for uh, rifting with us it was an honor man thanks for thank having you, me carl. a pleasure alan uh and uh you know everybody go home and watch surfing sarah <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then get back to me and tell me what i did on it okay all right well carl right, boys, have a good care. day buddy Talk thanks later. carl you right, bet. Thank see you. ya all right, guys, that was the show. Subscribe, rate, and review, and uh, follow Carl uh, Serafelio on, on the social media Facebook. and on Facebook. And uh, we'll see you guys next week. All right. You're listening to Razor Riffs with Keith Razor and Alan Lee right here on LA Talk Radio.